Hello students. Today the topic which we will be discussing is uh, implantation. Implantation which is uh, also called nidation. Till now we have understood that fertilization happens in the ampulla of a fallopian tube and then after fertilization the zygote starts undergoing cleavage divisions. The dividing zygote keeps moving towards the uterus and it takes nearly 4 days by the time it reaches uterus. In the uterus it keeps on floating for few days for nearly 3 days. It absorbs nutritive substances and then it has to attach with the wall of the uterus. That process of attachment or embedding of the blastocyst with the wall of the uterus is called implantation. So, how do we define implantation? Attachment or embedding of developing blastocyst with wall of uterus. Blastocyst is the blastula in case of mammals. For mammals, we are using the term blastocyst. For non mammals, we say blastula, right. So, as in this diagram, you can see that this is the blastocyst or the blastula. The central cavity is called blastocele. The outermost glycoproteinaceous layer is zona pellucida. This layer which I have shown with the black color is the trophoblast and few cells are attached at one corner that is what is embryoblast or ICM inner cell mass. Trophoblast has no role in the formation of embryo. The embryo proper actually develops from the embryoblast or the ICM. So, please remember the inner cell mass is going to form the embryo and trophoblast layer will form placenta and part of extra embryonic membranes. We will discuss extra embryonic membranes in our forthcoming lectures amnion, chorion, yolk sac, allantois. Now, before this structure could attach with the wall of the uterus, one very important process has to take place that is hatching of blastocyst. Zona pellucida layer ensures that implantation should happen at proper site. If zona pellucida dissolves in the fallopian tube itself where the fertilization has happened, then that structure will attach with the wall of fallopian tube resulting in tubal pregnancy. So, zona pellucida is intact here. So, the first step in implantation is Trophoblast secretes proteolytic enzymes to digest zona pellucida. The zona pellucida layer should vanish, it should dissolve before the implantation could happen. So, the trophoblast layer is going to secrete the enzymes which will dissolve this layer zona pellucida and that process is what is called hatching of blastocyst. Right. So, when the zona pellucida dissolves, now this structure can attach with the wall of the uterus. The trophoblast cells are very sticky, they can attach to any of the maternal tissues. So, zona pellucida ensures this thing that implantation should happen at the proper site. If you are asked a question that what is the proper site for implantation, the site for implantation is uterus. Uterus is designed for implantation. And if zona pellucida dissolves in fallopian tube, then that will result in a very dangerous situation that is tubal pregnancy, which is a type of ectopic pregnancy. So, here we will see that how this structure is going to attach with the wall of the uterus. I have drawn this diagram to show the process of implantation. These are the columnar cells of the uterus that is endometrium, right? Now, here we have not shown that layer with the red color, that means the zona pellucida has dissolved. When the zona pellucida dissolves, then the next step is trophoblast divides into two layers, inner cytotrophoblast and outer syncytiotrophoblast. You can see the same thing in the diagram also. The inner cytotrophoblast layer and the outer syncytiotrophoblast syncytium word refers to a multinucleated structure. So, in this the cellular boundaries are not very clear. So, it appears to be a multinucleated structure, right. 
syncytial trophoblast penetrates deep into the uterine, uh, uterine endometrium and it lays the foundation for the placenta. Syncytial trophoblast also secretes a proteinaceous hormone that is HCG. It is a glycoproteinaceous hormone. HCG stands for human chorionic gonadotropin. So, when this structure is implanting, it is attaching with the wall. HCG prolongs the life of corpus luteum. We know that when the ovulation occurs, the graphene follicle ruptures and the remaining cells of graphene follicle, they form a temporary endocrine gland called corpus luteum. Corpus luteum secretes progesterone. Progesterone is very important pregnancy maintaining hormone. So, corpus luteum is secreting progesterone. Corpus luteum cannot keep on secreting progesterone indefinitely. It requires a luteal support. So, the very important function of HCG is that HCG prolongs life of corpus luteum. So, the corpus luteum should continue producing progesterone. Implantation begins 7 to 9 days after fertilization and is completed by the end of 10th day with respect to fertilization. Say, if the cycle is of 28 days, ovulation has happened on day 14, fertilization has occurred by day 15. So, you add 10 days to that day 15, we get day 25. So, by the end of the day 25th, implantation has occurred. HCG secretion is now increasing. Gradually, this HCG will start appearing in the urine of the female. So, presence of HCG in the urine of a female is a positive test for pregnancy. That is what is gravidex test. This is a very sensitive test and it can confirm pregnancy right on the very first day of missed menstrual period. So, on day 25th, the HCG starts increasing in the blood and gradually it will start appearing in the urine also. So, very important function played by HCG is what? It prolongs the life of corpus luteum. Now, let us come back to this. I told you that trophoblast divides into two layers, the cytotrophoblast and syncytial trophoblast. Syncytial trophoblast is penetrating deep into the endometrium and it is laying the foundation for the placenta and it is also secreting HCG. Cytotrophoblast will play a role in the formation of chorion layer that is an extra embryonic membrane. So, it is involved in the formation of chorion which is the outermost extra embryonic layer that is going to cover the embryo. These cells are going to form the embryo proper. During implantation, the blastocyst completely sinks into the endometrium that is called the interstitial implantation, right? And the endometrium of the pregnant uterus is called decidua. So, what is decidua? The endometrium of the pregnant uterus. So, that was about implantation. Let us have a quick recap of what we have understood. Implantation is the embedding or the attachment of developing blastocyst with the wall of uterus. It begins 7 to 9 days after fertilization and is completed by end of 10th day with respect to fertilization. During implantation, the blastocyst completely sinks into the endometrium and that is what is called the interstitial implantation. The first step is that the zona pellucida should dissolve. So, the trophoblast is going to secrete proteolytic enzymes which will digest the zona pellucida that is called hatching of blastocyst. After that, trophoblast divides into two layers, inner cytotrophoblast and outer syncytial trophoblast. Syncytial trophoblast secretes what? HCG glycoproteinaceous hormone. Presence of this hormone confirms pregnancy that is called gravidex test. The hormone in the urine of the pregnant female that is going to confirm pregnancy, right? And the syncytial trophoblast is also penetrating into the endometrium. So, that was all about implantation. In our forthcoming lectures, we will discuss about the important process of gastrulation that how the different layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm are formed.